But the most entertaining part of the Australian Open 2022 has definitely been Nick Kyrgios, who's making his comeback, who's always known to be a spectacle, who's always known to be box office. Um, love him or hate him. He is pure entertainment. Um, just the tennis purists hate him. I think younger crowds, the younger generation loves him, loves the excitement and entertainment that he brings to the court, loves the energy he brings to the court. I'm a, I'm on I'm on the side that really enjoys his tennis, that watches his highlights religiously on on YouTube, that tunes into his matches just because he's fun, he's entertaining, he's different. Um he's just cool. He's he's I know there's people that are like, "Oh my god, man, he's disrespecting the opponent." He's doing all this. Man, he's having fun, bro. It's a sport. It's Yeah, you're supposed to play to win, but you're also supposed to have fun. So I'm a Nick Kyrgios fan. If you get disappointed by that or if you want to hate on me for that, that's cool, man. I, I like Nick Kyrgios. I was a Cuauhtémoc Blanco fan when I was little. That should say something. Odiame mas. I'm an America fan. Hate me more. That's the slogan for America. Odiame mas. Cuauhtémoc Blanco. He, Cuauhtémoc Blanco, if you don't know who that is, Mexican player, number 10, one of the most skilled players in Mexican history. He was known for being a hothead. He was known for, you know, stopping the butt, stopping the ball with his butt. Like, instead of just controlling it with his foot, he would turn around, let the ball bounce, and then it would bounce into his butt, and he would control it that way. He had a, he had a, he had a slouch on his back. In Spanish, they call it jorobada. Jorobada. And sometimes they would send it past to him. And, you know, everyone knows that you could stop the ball with your chest. Just chest it down, bring it down. This man was funny. He would use his jorobada. He would use his, his his slouch on his back. And the ball is coming in the air. Instead of chesting it down, he would turn around, use his slouch to bring it down. He would even give passes with his, with his back slouch. Uh, he would just, like, let the ball come. And when it got close, he would just arch his back. It'll bounce out. He was known for doing no no look passes. He was known for whenever he got a foul, he would pretend to take the foul quickly. So he would stop the ball. And then if you guys don't know soccer, I know I'm segueing, but if you guys don't know soccer, um, when, when you get fouled, you have to stop the ball from rolling because if the ball is moving, then they call the, the play back. So you got to like, let's say I was running with the ball and I get fouled. Then... They they mark the foul, so then you get the foul from the spot. You get you get to start the play from the spot of the foul, and sometimes you know teams like to hurry up, keep the play going, so they just you know put the ball down and and kick it to to resume play. But if the ball is moving, then the ref will blow the whistle and be like, "Hey, ball was moving, like bring it back." And then you just miss the opportunity to you know keep the play going quickly and catch the defense off guard. So there, so it is known. It is a common thing where players, you know, get fouled, they get up, they put the ball down, and they start playing. So, so Cuauhtémoc Blanco, he would do the fake where he would get fouled, and he would get up and put the ball down and pretend that he was going to restart play real quick. And then instead of kicking the ball, he would just do, like, this feint, and he would just, like, kind of, like, lift lift his nuts towards you and, like, pretend, like, like <laughs> he just, it was just, he's just a funny guy. He's very charismatic. He would rub the people the wrong way. And, you know, like I said, he had all these things that made him extra. So, like, if you if you were an America fan, if you rooted for him, you would love the guy with all the theatrics that he had. But if you were another team, and he played for America, the most hated team in Mexico. So, like, he was that type of player in the most hated team in Mexico. So, if you were an America fan, you loved the man. You He kind of exemplified everything the team represented and if you were one of the other 19 teams 17 teams in the mexican league you already hate america the team but then this guy that's showboarding and he's doing like passes with his slouch on his back and he's stopping the ball with his butt and he's doing like back heel passes and he's doing like body feints where he's kind of throwing his nuts at you you would you definitely hated that man with a, without a doubt you hated that man like with the bottom of your heart a fiery hate but i love that man i was an america fan and i loved all those theatrics so nick curios for me that's the type of player he is for tennis he showboats you know he does all these funny things tweeners between the legs no look passes no look mm, hits these volleys 
he spins, he gets the crowd pump. He reminds me of Cuauhtémoc Blanco, I'm not going to lie. He's a showman. He's very skilled. We all know Kyrgios is one of the most talented players on tour. I apologize for the long segue, but I just had to get my point across as to why I appreciate Nick Kyrgios. And he has been saying that tennis is going to die. They need to embrace more personalities. They need to embrace. It can't just be like a blue, like a white collar like, we're all just going to be robots, and we're all just going to want to win. We're not going to have fun. We're all going to say the right thing. We're all going to be buddy-buddy. And, you know, tennis, it's it's a uh, – I love tennis, and I've gotten into tennis more in, in the past few years. But I do – I think it is uh, uh, too buddy-buddy sometimes. Like, you warm up with your opponent. You, you share the same locker room. You, you know, you practice with each other in the off season. You, I've seen, uh, like, little vlogs online where – players share a house with like six other players and they all practice together and they all kind of live together i think berrettini and ffa i've seen and some other girls on the wta tour they've all shared houses and i've seen some videos about that and it's all cool it's all fun but i think it's also fun for you know to have a common enemy for someone to be the disruptor for people not to like some some of their opponents to not just be friends with everyone I think it's good for the sport. It's good to create, you know, like a common enemy, someone to root against, or if you like that type of player, someone to root for. I think that's what Nick Kyrgios has become. But nevertheless, we, we've been knowing this about him before this Australian Open, but this Australian Open, he's just taking it to the next level. That match against Brody in the first round was just amazing. He, he showed everyone the type of level that he could play out and how entertaining he could be while still being a high-quality singles player. And then the the singles match, the second round match against Medvedev, that was just thrilling. Like there's, I've seen countless highlights of that match on Twitter, on Instagram. That was that was so much fun. And for Kyrgios to play at that level, to compete against number two in the world, Medvedev, to really you know push him. It was only a four set match, but if Kyrgios would have won that first set tie break in the first set, he could have definitely really like scared Medvedev in that second round he like I, I'm pretty sure Medvedev did try a lot and it was a tough match for Medvedev but if Nick Kyrgios would have found a way to win that tie break in the first set dude honestly he could have probably upset him he and for Nick Kyrgios to be gone from tennis second half of tennis last year and be hurt and coming back from COVID it just goes to show the top of player Kyrgios is and it was a short-lived singles run but it was very fun against Brody against Medvedev it was it was entertaining tennis, but what that doubles, what their doubles run has been so far has been so unprecedented. Teaming up with fellow Australian Koki Nakis, Koki Nakis, they're into the semifinal. They play tomorrow at Rod Laver Arena, and if you guys have been keeping up with them, man, they've played in the Show Court Arena the last three round times, and it's been packed, man. And if you guys don't keep up with tennis or if you guys don't keep up with doubles tennis, it is not the same as singles, man. Singles, they, they get packed. Stadiums get packed. Everyone knows the singles players. Doubles, different story. Still entertaining, still fun. I got to see some doubles action at the San Diego Open. Taylor Fritz was teaming up. I forgot who he was teaming up with, but I got to see some doubles action of Taylor Fritz. I think they ended up playing against the number one seed in this tournament. I forgot their names, but anyways, not a lot of people play or pay attention in the doubles. And for Nick Kyrgios and Kokinakis to be packing stadiums, bringing that energy has just been very, very fun. In Australia, they had to turn, they had to put the the quarterfinal match of Kyrgios and Kokinakis against Puts and Venus. They put them on the main channel. They started with Nadal, but... Kyrgios and Kokinakis were making so much noise in the quarterfinals doubles that they pushed them to the main channel and moved Nadal against Chapo to one of the secondary channels. And it just goes to show you like the wave, the momentum that Nick Kyrgios has right now with Kokinakis. And I really hope that they win the whole thing. I know there's going to be a lot of haters, a lot of people that hate Kyrgios that think, you know, he stands for everything that's wrong with tennis. I disagree. I think he's exciting. I think he's fun. Um, I, I think he's great for the sport. And I think it's if if you love your heroes, 
if you love that, you know, white collar, always saying the right thing, always keeping your composure, respecting the sport. I think Nick Kyrgios, if you hate Nick Kyrgios, he's going to make you love your player even more. So it's good for you too. Like, how do I put it this way? Like, if you already like the complete opposite of Nick Kyrgios, Nick Kyrgios being there is just going to make you love your type of player even more. Because if everyone was just like your players, like, okay, everyone's this way, like, whatever. I think being a contrarian sometimes is good. Not just if you appreciate being a contrarian or going against the grain, but it also makes you appreciate um, the people that stay true to what you think is the correct way of playing tennis or, you know, respecting the sport. Like, you could just hate on your curios and just be like, damn, thank God that's not my favorite player. Thank God I like this player. And he's, you know, look at him. He's the perfect role model. Look at him. Just always playing correctly. Just always going back to his line. Always, you know, beating the time clock. Never getting a time violation. Always, you know, talking respectfully to the line judge. Always, you know, just going back to his... You know, if, if you like those type of players, I think Nick Kyrgios being such... A different player is going to appreciate your favorite player. It's going to make you appreciate your favorite player more. So it's still good for you. That's what I'm trying to say. But regardless, Nick Kyrgios, Koki, Koki Naki's incredible run in the Australian Open. They bring the energy. And it's been fun, man. And I know Nick Kyrgios, I, I know he knows what he's doing, man. Because I don't know how many other tennis players follow other sports. But I know Nick Kyrgios watches the NFL. He watches the NBA. He's always seen rocking, like, NBA jerseys, Kobe, Jason Tatum is one of his favorite players because he loves the Celtics. So I know he's he's looking around. He probably he probably goes to NBA games, goes to football games, and damn, these crowds are electric, man. Look at look at look at the energy in this arena. Look at the energy at this NFL game. Look at the energy in this soccer game. Like, why is that not the energy at these tennis games? Like, he probably thinks like. How cool would it be to be playing in a similar um, scenario, like in a similar like atmosphere? Why can't we have those crowds in tennis where like you just you just have the whole stadium rocking, chanting, having fun, not just being quiet, not just being told to shut up, not just being told to quiet, please. Like, why can't we have real crowds having real fun and just making the whole stadium, the whole atmosphere real, real fun? And I think Nick Kyrgios is doing that, and I appreciate that. And I mean, I get it. If you like old school tennis, that's great. But I think this is this is also this is also fun. This is also great. 